a book dependent on scientific knowledge with a robust bibliography of articles and essays, but which remains easy to read and incredibly quick-paced and compelling, Parasite Eve is a book that I could have bought in English in 2005. And man, do I wish I had. It grabs you early on and keeps making you turn the pages, teasing what's going on until finally everything is revealed, and you dive into the last quarter of the book, going as fast as you can through until the surprising ending. It is phenomenal and unique, and very, very gross. Published in Japan in 1995, Parasite Eve gained a lot of fame both in Japan and around the world. A live-action film based on the novel was made, and a video game sequel to the book was released for the PlayStation, which itself got a sequel soon after, and another game in the franchise came out in 2010. I never played the game, but I was very aware of it and I'd always wanted to. Thankfully, I didn't know much about the games, or the story of Parasite Eve as a whole, so I went into the book completely unaware of what was awaiting me. It starts with a woman named Kiyomi getting into a car accident under strange circumstances. Her husband, Toshiaki, is a research assistant, working with bacteria and cancer cells and animal testing and mitochondria. For those that don't know anything about mitochondria, I am not the person to tell you anything. I have never been a science person, I have always been in the arts department since I was a wee lad, and a lot of stuff in the book flew right over my head. Thankfully, the author does a great job of explaining things as they are needed, and you don't need to retain too much knowledge as you're reading. When something matters to the plot, it's explained. When something seems confusing or weird, it's explained. The author never lets you wander in a daze, so while you may only half understand what's being talked about, you'll get why things are happening the way they are. Also, I never had the feeling that I lacked anything just because I didn't have any scientific knowledge. It never felt like I would have or should have anticipated any plot point had I known more about biology. The author, Hideaki Sena, basically had the same job as Toshiaki when he wrote the novel, and he relates information that is real, but it definitely feels like he knew that his audience wouldn't understand most of it, so he explains things often and well, in a scientific manner, but with brevity. I glossed over some paragraphs, filled with words that I did not comprehend, but usually the information dumping was limited to one paragraph at a time, maybe two, so it didn't mess with the flow of reading too much. And while I am still an extreme novice when it comes to anything in any scientific field, I do feel like I know at least a little more about cellular biology now. But just a little. Getting back to Toshiaki, after his wife is injured, he does some strange things. And like I said, the car accident itself was very odd, Kiyomi suddenly losing her vision. These weird things happen for a reason, and as the book progresses, even odder things happen. And as you go through, you're given little clues as to what's going on, but nothing really makes sense. This causes such an intense interest that, while very little happens in the first third or maybe even half of the book, I never felt bored. The groundwork was being laid, and I could tell that. I didn't want to wade through the novel to get to the good stuff. I wanted to hurry along because I wanted to know more, because I knew that what came next would be better than what came before. And yes, the last 100 pages are better than the first 200, but they could only be so good because the first two-thirds of the book set everything up expertly, explaining everything that needed to be explained and putting all the pieces where they needed to be. This is a bit of an aside, but another book I read recently, Audition by Ryu Murakami, did something very similar. The third act and climax of the book were hard-hitting and powerful, a gut punch that you weren't quite prepared for and it was because everything before that had unfolded slowly, taking its time. Being able to balance a story in the right way matters a lot. Parasite Eve and Audition do it perfectly, telling stories that take their time, then having everything at the end happen so quickly that it feels like a different book altogether. They are both satisfying all the way through. When a book drops the ball, however, it is very easy to see and a pain to read. Being slow-paced and having nothing happen are not the same thing. A book I read last year, which I have to make a video about at some point if just to rationalize why I wasted my time reading it to the end, 
completely failed where Parasite Eve and Audition succeeded. Horror Show by David Dark, and for those wondering, yes, that is a pseudonym, starts out quick, then slows down, and stays down for most of the time. Nothing happens of any importance, and the characterization is hollow and a waste of time. It's not wrong to make a pulpy story about unlikable or one-dimensional characters, but there's no reason to spend a bunch of needless time with those characters. Just give us the action. My point is, I guess, knowing what bad writing is makes it easier to see how well-written Parasite Eve is. The characters, a cast of about half a dozen, are fleshed out in ways that count, but we don't spend too much time with them. We meet a transplant doctor, a young patient, and her father, and we never learn much about their personal lives, but we learn about the type of people they are, in general and as it relates to the story. The patient, 14-year-old Mariko, is scared and willful. We don't know what kind of music she listens to or what she does with her friends, but we don't need to. The story doesn't involve such elements, so they're not brought up. The author includes what needs to be included and omits what is unnecessary, and he does so while making you care about the characters and the situations. The story is captivating, the characters feel real, and the science seems believable. I don't think anything like what happens in Parasite Eve will ever happen, but most horror and science fiction that is largely grounded and based in reality is dependent on at least one fantastical element. And in the case of Parasite Eve, it's... You know what? I'm not going to say. Every part of this novel should be enjoyed with an unprepared mind, and I've striven to avoid spoilers to give prospective readers that chance. I don't want to give anything away. Bottom line... Parasite Eve is deserving of the legacy it has had. It's a great Japanese horror novel, one that should please fans of J-horror, with weird body stuff and images that you may never be able to scrub from your mind, but it's well worth reading even if you're not specifically a fan of Japanese horror. If you want a disturbing book, pick it up. You might never feel comfortable again. But isn't that the goal with horror? And remember... Washing your hands only kills the germs that are on the outside of your body.